Sanjay Head. She's a senior advocate at the Supreme Court of India, and he joins us live now from New Delhi. Thank you so much for being with us on the program. Now, this back and forth between the farmers and the government has been unsuccessful so far. Walk us through why, after three rounds of talks, the two sides, they haven't been able to reach an agreement. Well, the farmers and the Indian government have been at loggerheads uh, ever since the Indian government tried to corporatize Indian agriculture. The farmers led a protest against um, bills, legislation that had been passed through parliament. The government was forced to withdraw it the last time. At that particular point of time, the issue of minimum support prices had been kept aside. The farmers are now insisting that um, if, uh, uh, if things have to go ahead, they should be assured of a minimum support price for their crops. You see, a majority of India still depends on agriculture. And agriculture is subject to the vagaries of the weather as well as to the vagaries of the market. If they do not get a minimum support price, then farmers are in deep economic trouble. Uh, these are prosper uh, prosperous farmers from an area just north of the capital, Delhi. This is from P the Punjab, and they have been leading this movement. Unfortunately, it doesn't uh, look like both sides are anywhere near an agreement currently. Right. As you mentioned, the majority of India does depend on agriculture. And I mean, the farmers, they've been quite consistent with their requests and their protests for that matter. How has this whole process affected their livelihoods? Well, the, if farmers are not guaranteed at least a certain amount for their produce, they are then at the mercy of the market. If there is an oversupply of, uh, if there's a bumper crop, prices crash and they get nothing. If there's scarcity, the profit goes all to the market. So what the farmers are saying is, that at least a floor price should be assured by the government buying it at a minimum in case of uh, bumper crops and in case the market does not give them that floor price, which should be based on a formula about inputs plus a certain amount of profit. Uh, I So far, the government has been saying that A, it's not economically feasible, B, it would possibly violate some international commitments. I don't think the farmers are buying that argument currently. Mm -hmm. Right. So the Indian government is saying uh, we'll buy some crops at uh, the assured prices on a five-year contract. The farmers are rejecting that offer, saying they need a legal guarantee for minimum support prices on all 23 of their crops. Do you think that the two sides will be able to meet in the middle moving forward? Well, there will be attempts, but I cannot predict the outcome. What complicates matters is that India is due for elections shortly in the next two or three months. Very often, an outgoing government is unlikely to make commitments which will bind an incoming government. So there is also the question of timing. The, the government of the day all may see that their political opponents are behind this farmer's agitation, and it may well be that they decide uh, not to give in to the farmers. All right, Sanjay Hedge, thank you so much for being with us here on the News Hour and sharing that insight with us. I appreciate it.